Hi, everybody, and welcome to the 19th edition of the Group Exhibit Hydrogen and Fuel Cells here at the Hanover Messe 2013. For those that are not familiar with the public forum, I invite you to come and have a seat. Drinks on the house, or waitresses will come around and serve you what they can, cold drinks or hot drinks. Um, we have a discussion today. We'll be discussing with Forschungsstrom Zentrum Hulik, R&D for PIM electrolysis with regard to large-scale hydrogen production. Please help me welcome the head of the PEM Electrolysis Department, Mr. Jürgen Mergel. Thank you to Hoppla. join us today. Woo. Thank you for your kind introduction. Well, um, electrolyzer technology is not new for right. the center of research at Rulik. It's something you have studied in quite details for years. So why don't you give us a little bit of a history on previous research that the center has done? So uh, in the past research center, Jülich was involved in the development of the alkaline electrolysis. This was in the 80s and 90s of the last cen century, where we had have uh, a lot of activities, especially in, in, in Europe, uh, to develop uh, electrolyzers for let me say, a hydrogen uh, world or a, a hydrogen te technology. But at the end of, uh, or at the beginning of 2000, all these activities are going down. And uh, so uh, we focused uh, after two to 2000 more in uh, fuel cell development at our institute. And just lately, you've kind of moved your electrolyzer research into PEM electrolyzer. Why that move? Where this new motivation to go from alkaline to PEM comes from? Uh, this is a long story. So uh, now, if we uh, go more to renewables, uh, this is uh, uh, from the German government. The decided to build up the renewable energy to reduce uh, CO2 out output up to 2050 more than 90 per, per percent. That means uh, we had to have uh, more fluctuating en energy. That means we have a lot of uh, excess energy and we have times where we don't have e enough electricity coming from the wind, coming from the solar power. And therefore, we need an energy storage system. And, what, and one kind of uh, energy storage system could be the uh, storage doing it by uh, chemical uh, energy, like high hydrogen. There's also the option to do this with bat batteries. But uh, if you look at the uh, storage capacity which is needed in the gigawatt hour scale. This is only possible with chemical uh, storage media like hydrogen. And therefore, we looked for the uh, classical electrolysis, that means the alkaline electrolysis, and the PEM electrolysis. And we looked at not only in the kilowatt scale, if you will realize this new energy con concept, you need an installed capacity in 2030 f of around 30 to 50 gigawatts. And uh, therefore, we decided to do this with PEM. While PEM electrolysis is or could be running more dynamically, more than uh, alkaline electrolysis. And we found also that the investment cost could be less than of the let me say, at the moment, very cheap alkaline electrolysis technology. So, just to resume what you covered here, you're saying that currently, if you were to buy an alkaline electrolyzer compared to a PAM, they're cheaper. Yes. However, because of the proposed or the possibility of PEM electrolyzer to be better at using the critical load, the overload, which yeah. we had discussed, so is power density is better, uh, we have the possibility of having a cheaper system in the long run when we talk into multi-gigawatt of, yes. of um, power. And all, the, all this motivation of ch switching your research to PEM electrolysis is kind of pushed by the government, which kind of ties in right into the previous topic we had with uh, the government and the Natural Gas Association and everything, um, that there is a possibility in Germany and other 
uh, country because we have such a high demand for natural gas that one day we'll have a... And we want to move to renewable energy to reduce our CO2 consumption. But the problem with re renewable energies is we can't predict when the power is coming. There's yeah. high and lows. There's peak and lows. And how will PEM electrolysis best fit that movement of power generation? So uh, if you look at the performance of an alkaline and a PEM el electrolysis, depending on the inner re resistance of the alkaline and the PEM electrolysis, your UI curve, so the per performance of a wide uh, range, operating range for, for a PEM electrolysis is much better than for an al alkaline water electrolysis. For example, uh, alkaline electrolysis, you can wrap up, run up to, let me say, 600 milliamps per square centimeter. A PEM electrolysis normally works now in technical products up to 2 amps, 2,000 milliamps per square centimeter. That's, that means in the same a area you, you can, or cell area, you can produce threefold more high hydrogen. At the moment, by higher investment costs, depending on the high catalyst loading of a PEM a electrolysis. But uh, our main goal in uh, our national pro projects are to reduce the catalyst loading by the same or by a better per per performance. And therefore, we think PEM electrolysis can be cheaper than uh, alkaline water electrolysis in the future. So the main challenge of your research will be to like you said, reduce the catalyst loading, which means to reduce the cost of the metals and things like that. That's right. So what are the ideas right now that you're looking into to move away from noble metals? So uh, this is not so easy. So uh, in fuel cell development, uh, there are many activities to replace platinum on the cathode and also on the anode side. This is quite the same in uh, PEM electrolysis, especially for the cathode, where you use normally pl platinum as a catalyst. So in, uh, let me say, in uh, normal PEM electrolysis or, or, or commercial products, at the moment, we have loadings of about one or two milligrams per square centimeter. But with our partners, one partner is Solvicor, is a co commercial C CCM, Pro provider, we have now reached 0.6, 0.5 milligram per square centimeter on the cathode, quite with the same per performance. But the big issue is to reduce the anode side, the catalyst loading. This is not platinum, this is e iridium. And iridium is much expensive than, uh, or more expensive than, than platinum. And the loading at the moment is six milligram per square centimeter. And uh, therefore we try to reduce the uh, iridium loading by making the catalyst uh, more active at uh, the catalyst at the moment is, or we are trying to substitute or substitute the I iridium by non uh, precious metals. This is not so easy, and therefore we do this uh, with uh, Max Planck Institute, which is, which is suited in uh, Mülheim. So these partners are all part of a project, I think, that has a name. It's called Ecolizer. Ecolizer, that that's right. And w if you were to summarize the main goal of that project, what would that be? Uh, so we have three topics. The first topic is to reduce the catalyst loading or subs, uh, substitute the precious metals inside uh, the CCM, so that the cost for, for, for the C CCM is uh, less than by a factor of uh, 10. The other aim is uh, to, uh, pro uh, to uh, reduce the uh, membrane sickness, while the membrane sickness is, uh, or is uh, depending on the uh, gas quality and therefore we need at the moment sick mem membranes uh, around 200 mi micrometers and therefore we have a high o ohmic loss uh, and we try to make this membrane thinner by the same gas purity 
Well, if you use uh, thinner mem membranes, the gas permeation, especially from hydrogen to the oxygen, will be higher. And therefore, you can run your PEM electrolyzer only in a region of 40 to 100 per, per percent. And this is not so good if you will run your electrolyzer dynamically, also at very low part load operation. And therefore, we are looking for new membrane ma ma materials which have a very low resistance but a good gas separation. And the third point is uh, the main costs inside an uh, electrolysis cell is not the membrane with the precious metals, it's the separator plate which is made out of titanium and normally plated with precious metals and the porous current collectors, especially on the anode, which is porous ti titanium. These costs are uh, approximately uh, one half of the overall cost for, for a stack. And therefore, we look for cheaper separator plates, stainless steel or steel, protected with a protective layer, which is also a very, or have also a very uh, conductive uh, layer, so that the ohmic contact resistance is very low. And these are the three, three topics of our pro project. And so there's quite a bit to cover in that project. Yeah. How long is the timeline of this project? So the timeline is very tough. So uh, we started uh, on the 1st July of 2012, and the whole project runs uh, up to 2015. That's, that means uh, three years. So do you see an end product at the end of 2015, you think? So we hope that we will have uh, commercial CCCM, uh, which is provided from Solvicor, which are very low catalyst loading. We hope that we can offer a s cheaper metallic separator plate, which is part of Grebner. And uh, hopefully we have also a membrane material, which is have a better per performance uh, as the well-known Nafion uh, membrane, which is normally used in PEM uh, electrolysis. And all of that by the end of 215. Yes. Actually, I invite you to go to their booth, which is just right here to my uh, to my left, a C68. They have a great little pamphlet, a pamphlet that describe these three projects, what what are the advantages, the disadvantages, what challenges they have in front, and the motivation. It's quite well explained. So I invite you to go to their booth and pick one up if you want more information. Um, and I'm sure Mr. Merkel will also be available later at their booth to answer any question you may have. But I'll invite the floor to ask any question if you have any. Br just raise your hand and I'll come down and bring the microphone to you if you have any. Um, but let me continue here a little bit further. Um, like you had discussed earlier, the whole idea behind a PEM electrolyzer will be to the energy storage of renewable energy because of the peak and the lows. Um, do you think that's the last key missing to see a true fuel cell and hydrogen economy start? The energy storage of renewable energy via hydrogen as a gas? Uh, I think this is one possibility. So there's another possibility to do this uh, by, by batteries, but uh, we think uh, one way to reduce the CO2 emission is to uh, take the uh, energy which is not, uh, or the excess energy to produce hydrogen and use this hydrogen in fuel cell cars to reduce the CO2 emission worldwide. And uh, therefore, we need, let me say, uh, cheap te te technologies to produce the hydrogen by costs of less than, let me say, four euros per, per kilogram. And we think this is uh, doable by e electrolysis. And but really, the technology is here. It's just the yes. cost that is pro prohibitive, right? Yes. So it's it's going to be a busy three years for uh, Hulik Forschung Storm, I'm, sur I'm sure, because yes. there <laughs> seems to be quite a bit to cover in little time. Um, unfortunately, we're running out of time as well, so I'll invite you to ask more questions and d discuss uh, this topic in more details with Mr. Mergel back at his booth at C68. Uh, please help me thank him for his time. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Well, thank you for your attention. And